Welcome back to Airbnb Success. My name is Trang Nguyen and in this session, I'm going to show you the part two of the training, how to create a wow listings in order to attract guests, for them to book your place and then start making money from it. Yeah. Okay, first thing we're looking at listing your space. Okay, so what you do is click into uh, the button called list your space and you will see the screen in front of uh, you now. That will be the entire. You will choose and have an option of choosing um, either private room and try home entire home flat, how many people you allow to accommodate and the um, and your location. Then you look on the right hand side, you will see what you could earn um, in your area. And this is the price of what I could earn in London for one week uh, with one uh, person in a private room. Okay. This is just a suggestion, don't buy into it, all right. You might get more, you might get less, but it's, it's, it's a good suggestion that Airbnb is giving you. So go into airbnb.co.uk slash room slash new and you uh, will be able to create listings or you just open Airbnb and you see a button called list um, your space and click into it. Right, so when you list your space there's a few things to concern about and the first thing is description um the listing name the title is it the most important things when people look in your space um and actually there's a two most important things the title and the photo uh that is determined the person looking to uh looking for a place to click in your listing or not yeah so photo and then listing name with the listing name, the good title have to grab the user attention and provide some key information about the space um, to create a listing description on um, your listing name and summaries are the important things. The, na the name is the first thing the potential renter will read after your photo catch the eye and the summaries is the first thing they read after they click through. Every marketable product has a title. Um, remember the iPhone, uh, revolutionary iPhone. Remember when it released by Apple and instantly catching people's uh, attention. If you, um, oh, you know, you could remember about the Breaking Bad television series about the council reading high school chemistry teacher are the most popular all over the world a famous sandwich that has been served to billions of people across the globe and that also including yourself unless you are vegan or vegetarian from birth uh it's named the big mark <laughs> the successful products have good titles and Although substance, substance is important, a clever or catchy name can mean the difference between a customer trying something new or passing up an amazing product. So pick your top two to three uh, reasons you think you have a good space and then um, bottom down to one more word. Um, for example, it's location, the site, rooftop, access, penthouse, um, you know, private room, uh, yes, so start uh, brainstorming and thinking about the name of the listings um, it is similar to the headline, a blog, or uh, of a publication. It needs to attract a browser to click on the listing and need read more. A good title should accomplish two goals craft user attention and provide some key information regarding the space. Now, I've seen many titles that include either the city name or the particular neighborhood. These are both improper use of the title. Why? Because both city and neighborhood are 
already displayed in the search result when people look for somewhere they like to travel to they already clicking into either london new york china india uh, shanghai they also search for that so there's no problem for you to put your title in the same name and you only have 35 characters for the listing name so think about the key qualities that might attract a uh, guest or browser to click, click on your uh, property. Okay, Your title needs to be snappy, inviting, and specially tailored for a particular crowd. It needs to prompt users to click and explore your, sorry, explore your listing. I recommend using uh, descriptive terms and a phrase such as a perfect location, luxury, incredible, uh, incredible amenities, or um, a rooftop, a penthouse. Think about the best and most unique aspect of your house and try to incorporate them into your title. If your place is special, like it's a, um, like it's a lighthouse or it's a boat, you know, then that's already stand out. <laughs> But, but do put it in the description, uh, a yuck, uh, uh, um, a tent, then the description will jump out to the, to the type of crowd that interested in unique place to stay. And use descriptive terms and phrase like perfect, luxurious, great, uh, private, comfy, comfortable, spacious, etc. Uh, I will provide you the keyword list too um, later so you can take a look and using those as well just copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste, anyone can do that. So do consider are you near public uh, transport station, are you price competitive, in the room beautifully decorated, the neighborhood quiet, uh, what make your spot desirable for booking and then modify the title based on the season as well this is a, a very good trick that i learned a very good host those benefit and keyword list to create a listing name the great title from different city and all of the listing among the highest performer within the location i will read you some example in the keyword list all right in cities like los angeles there's a very popular name, uh, popular title like Luxury Private Beach Size Studio uh, comma Pool. And in New York is Beautiful Studio in Luxury Building. How attractive is that? Beautiful Studio in Luxury Building. Though attractive, attractive word as, you know, draw people into your listing. In Chicago, there are Oxy Artist Studio by the Lake, so nice. In Vancouver, there's a place with the title Amenity Rich Condo Downtown Schlatt's Parking. That's a park, right, in Vancouver with a parking. And Toronto, Stunning Arc Lover Rock and Draw Apartment. This kind of title is will attract certain number, certain crowd, like the people wearing suit. In the office all day, they wouldn't be drawn into drug and draw apartment, all right? But there's, there's a lot of people like new experience, traveling places, and art lover. They love to come there. Another place in Paris called Luxury Quiet Close to Eiffel Tower. That's very spot on, Eiffel Tower. Um, and it's quiet. London, chic, a cozy flat near Big Ben. That is so, so great. It totally jumped out. Okay. Um, right. Moving next. Um, it's a, a great way to drive up business and customer demand is to modify the title based on the season. Since booking usually happens within one to two months of a guest travel day, you can modify your title temporarily in accordance with whatever major event is about to take place. Like in London, we have nothing to event, and in that around that season, I tend to change the name a bit. And um, yeah, 
uh, to take a moment to consider what event or season tend to draw the largest crowd from out town. I mean, yeah, to, to example, I'm saying a carnival Notting Hill um, is, is, is a one of the most popular carnival in London and also known as uh, one of the widest party on the planet. The visitor uh, to London um, believe that they can parade and take part in the non-stop festivity. And um, few example, good title. Uh, uh, to bad luxury carnival center parties, or watch carnival parade from the balcony, or best bus carnival. carnival. Right, um, but of course those names, you can't really leave them all day all the time, you got to change it, turn to term and season. Moving to summary and the detail of the description. The listing summary is you to communicate further detail about your listing that support the listing name and you have only 250 characters. So when you go into the listing and click on um, a particular one you will see on the top immediately in front of you there will be pictures, the main pictures and then the summaries. Okay, you only allow 250 characters. It's it tells the reader what makes your room, your house, your apartment special. Talk about what the room feels like. Okay. Describe the decor and mention detail about the neighborhood and the location. If you have successful role into a potential customer with your awesome picture and title the description of where you suited it. This is your opportunity to picture of your home. Is it is it at the amenities and is it the surrounding area with a lovely um, wording that attracting them? You know, I encourage you to sink your teeth into this section and let your writing answer any hanging question or concern a potential guest might have. Most people would want to know: Is the room or the apartment or house attractive? Um, then they can determine this partly through the photo you provide because people also concerned is the neighborhood safe, um, is it quiet, um, and is there anything fun to do nearby, any restaurant, any bar, any shopping, um, is your house, uh, your place uh, located near public transport, um, and how convenient is it to drive to the other side of the city, it is story behind any story behind your listings it has something that makes it special or different from all the listings in the area and of course they also if it's if it's just a, a, a part of the place that you rented out then they will concern uh, is there a private entrance and if they get the old bathroom and is there a pre-parking outside of your place you know create description uh, also using the keyword listing, all right, and accurate describe your property. Make sure you uh, describe what were mentioned in the listing name. For example, welcome to a comfy and private room near downtown London. Perfect for a short stay and affordable to um, Londonize. Um, I mean, um, embankment is a safe and desirable neighborhood on the east side of the river. Uh, walk, you can walk to cool bars and restaurants and just hop on the bus to explore the whole city. Uh, another one is make your trip to, to Barcelona, a comfortable one in a quiet country style home, power off the beaten paths. But just step to a great restaurant and shopping, enjoy your old private engines and bathroom, plus a set of vintage bicycle for exploring. Those items you should uh, include in the description are the size of the house. Um, if you can't uh, <laughs> ride out to the square feet, they're even right. I don't do that, sorry. Um, the number of bedrooms, of course, this is important. The number of bathrooms and the outdoor areas, such as balconies, patio, porch, um, porch, sorry. Description of your room, the floor, 
um, the room is on uh, either ground level or top level either uh, they live in the ground and you living at the top or you been living at the ground and they living at the top uh, the presence of an elevator approximately to public transport and approximately to supermarket distant parking availability again this is your chance to be detailed and elaborate give your reader the very last bit of um, information you, you uh, must have what side the best what appliance does your kitchen have it is a bathtub in the bathroom or a shower what the title is like your diploma piece of paper with the name of your major the description is your phd thesis an in-depth rundown of everything you have to offer details no limit at all and answer all the guests concerned about your place and evoke positive emotion versus description physical stuff as i talk about previous talk um, so if you use a lot of words that evoke the emotional, that, that better because sometimes people make decisions based on the emotion, not on like how many chairs you have in the room or how many toilets. That's important. But if you can say something like, uh, you know, a nice comfy bathroom with two extra toilets, you feel better. And good wordings uh, versus bad wordings when you write your list. Anything that positive you get, keep all the positive around. Write an accurate and realistic presentation um, details. When you are describing your apartment, is as a manager, employing words that evoke positive emotion, like I said earlier. So instead of simply describing furniture or an item in a matter of fact, Attempt to use colorful words and phrase and positive emotion. Good word. An example of good word was a bad word. Uh, poor wording like the house has a balcony. You can replace it with after a great day of sightseeing, the balcony is the perfect and lush spot to reflect on the day while enjoying a cool drink in the afternoon. That sounds so great, right? I mean, I'm not very good with writing, but if you start looking out there and looking at all the listing and start thinking, brainstorming, then you can make your work more flower, more beautiful. Okay, let, let's um, me give you another example. Instead of saying, my apartment has a bedroom, a bathroom, and a full kitchen with utensils and cooking materials, you can say, notice the marvelous decoration in this immaculately clean apartment the space is comprised of a cozy double bedroom a large and well-lit bathroom an impressively chic living room and a fully stocked kitchen that is perfect for any amateur chef looking to have a nice meal see that makes the whole thing feel much better Okay. Or do you want your listing to be as attractive and appealing as possible? Make sure to give an accurate and realistic presentation, all right? Nothing making out. Don't promise anything you can't deliver. To ensure that you are providing a well-tailored and reasonably presentative listing, Airbnb has a special rating category called Accuracy. If you push the limit and mislead your customer, your overall rating will pay the price. So there you go. Uh, that is okay. Another thing is copy all the listing description. Okay, you can copy mine. I uh, um I will um give you the list of a description. Um, or you can look in my uh, listing description. Um, it's not very great because I am Vietnamese, remember, and I'm still learning English every day. Ha, 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 ha. Um, but uh, I, I bet some of you can drive much, much better than me because I normally just ask um, my husband to uh, put some wording and do nice work for me. Um, so do look around your area. 
then you start seeing all the listings of the nice and start copying them. Not exactly word to word, of course, because that's going to be a uh, reflect on your um, listing, right? So don't do that, but do um, copy the idea, the way they write, and then put it in your listing. The next one will be location. Uh, so just fill in your address and then pinpoint on the Google map. Um, so Airbnb gives you two options, either exact uh, address or just print it. And then um, they will reflect it in the whole area. And the guests will see um, roughly where your listing is located in the search result, but they won't be able to see the exact address, all right? until they um, book your place yeah. then they airbnb will send them the confirmation information um, of your address and then it will show on the map on the google map that installed inside airbnb of the exact location your one then next we're moving into amenities these amenities uh, is a checklist that you create for guests to know exactly what you have and make the decision to book. Um, so Airbnb will have a list out of all basic amenities and what you don't have, you just untick it. I mean, you don't, you don't take it and it will appear to be strike out when the guests look into your listings. And some amenity will need further explanation in the descriptions. And then there's some amenities you always forget and guess, um, but the guests ex expect to have them. Let, let's go down to uh, explain a few um, amenity in the description, such as laundry, parking of premises, breakfast, pets, uh, smoking, the gyms, you know, those are the things that you will be tend to be asked over and over again um, when the guests uh, take an interest in your place. They will they will actually look down into do you have done some of those. Um, laundry, you can include this if you had a laundry nearby. But if you uh, live in the house and you let the guests use uh, the washing machine and the laundry room, then that's that's a plus. Parking on premises. Um, I would say that you can check this if you have parking, but if it's not on the premises, you have to mention it in your listing, all right? Um, because because some place like in center of the big city, uh, popular city, you wouldn't be able to get parking. Uh, you could be able to get parking, but then it will be a charge either from your local authorities or from a specific car park or specific hotel that um, your guests can stay and um, pay for it. The breakfast option, it doesn't mean that you serve in breakfast. Um, it just means that you have stuff in your fridge and it's open for get to use. But do um, explain it clearly in your listings. All right. Think about um, having pet, had a, having guests who bring in pet as well. If you can always say in the listing to ask about pet beforehand, okay? This is a big difference between the big dog and small cat. Allowing pets can be a big advantage to your listing, but of course, it will go with more cleanings. Smoking, right? If you are a smoking person and, you know, whatever you design in your house, it will be up to you. But um, I highly recommend that don't let people smoke in your house. It's not worth it unless, yeah, of course, yeah, unless you're already a more smoker. But if you you already a smoker, then do consider what that will mean for your guests. Um, you can let your guests smoking outside if and if you do that as well, then it's big, right? Or uh, if you have a garden, get can go, guests can go to the garden to smoke. But do. Um, state that clearly in your description. Another one is gym. If you have the gym nearby, that is plus. 
um, or if you even have a gym inside your old block of flat and that provide to all the resident and guests can access it they're even better for your listings so we talk for about adding each amenity because some are going to be required before you check the guests and some are unnecessary but nice to have you know so keep that in mind the internet is going to be required that's the most most important thing is the internet you heard nowadays that internet is the basic needs of people so unless your listing is, is the cabin lock in the middle of nowhere well, everyone would expect that you uh, don't have the internet option but um, most of the place people go into travel they will expect to have an internet and you will lose quite a lot lot number of guests if you don't have the internet option or right, so if you don't actually have internet in your house because you just use it on your phone then do consider to um, apply for one okay there's some amenity you often forget and but the guests expect them I will um, I will give you the list of uh, the checklist of what the amenity that you need to get for your guests every guest traveling have a different need and want it all right um, those missing amenity could be like alarm clock, stationery, a nice stand, a blow dryer, basic toiletry, cereal, coffee maker, wine opener, extra blanket, water, hooks, and etc. Um, if you just run up and down the eyes of um, either uh, Waste Tesco, Samuri, IKEA, you know, or the supermarket store, you will see things that the guests will need and start spotting out. So try to imagine all the things you use when you travel and you will be able to reflect it onto your checklist of amenity. So when we're done with amenity, we're moving into photos. As everyone said, the photos of pictures worth thousand words we are highly visual and human being and we rely mostly on our vision to understand the world so the sense of sight is a key tool to um, for human to um, hunt animal decode history create technologies and understand our um, fellow human beings so if anything a picture is worth far more than a thousand words but the first part of your listing then the visitor will um, looking into is um, a selection of your photo so when the um, search um, result appear after a guest search for a particular place they want to travel to um, they will see your title and the uh, primary photo appear in your listings but this is the most uh, critical factor for your click to rate, all right? Um, because of this, make sure your place look is absolutely best when you're checking those photo shot. And um, there's an unlimited uh, number of photos you can upload on Airbnb, either far photo or 80 photo. They can. Um, accommodates all of that so for the for basic photo you have to have is the bedroom itself the bathroom toilet bathroom slash toilet uh, the kitchen and and living room so that that is um for most important pictures but if you don't have the living room then it might be trace that's it, the three basic, ah, sorry, the front door, the front door, um, or the area of your um, listings. Mm -hmm. Okay, when it comes to the actual photo shoot, I strongly recommend that you take an advantage of an Airbnb professional photo service. If it is available in your area, use according to Airbnb host that 
you this service make on an average two and a half times as much income as us who use the old photo. And the first, the pro professional photo service is absolutely free. So that's a perk for using Airbnb, all right? Um, moreover, the photographer highly professional and manage the entire photo shoot themselves. So you don't even need to tell them anything. They could even uh, lay out. I mean, they won't lay out the bed for you. They would um, adjust the room and the bed, how to look is best. Do this for checking the high quality of photo shoot by yourself before you um, be able to get in touch with Airbnb photographer. Um, so because you need your listing to be up online and running, you have to fill in the photo before you can contact any, anyone to make a new photo for yourself, make a professional photo for yourself. For yourself. So these are a few tips that can help you to check high quality photo that create a well um, image. First is clear and clean space. Having a great photo taken is depend very highly on your uh, place. Um, so you have to prepare your room um, properly. Clean each room with the clean cleanliness they have ever been. Remove all the cluster from each photo shot. Um, there should not be anything there in the shot unless you're planning it to be there. Okay. Make sure to insert um, the accessory into each shot. You can rotate the items of interest through its shot, for example, flower or pictures of um, the decoration in the room, pillows. Let's go all on to the detail. Mm. When you check, um, yeah, when you check the photo, remember to um, make sure your shot is um, focused in something particular and make it clear and also it's got to be in horizontal um, never take photo in portrait or vertical because they don't fit on airbnb side and they look very awkward they look awful you're gonna have like two black block on the left and the right hand side of your photo yeah make sure your shot focus on something and it's clear don't take photo of between the room or spaces on the wall okay, is horrible. There has to be a pawn to the shot. Take an extra shot every time you take pictures so you can pick the least blurry image as well. Check the shot from where your eyes naturally naturally are and not above or below your head. Okay. Um, and you got to optimize your shot for lighting. Get as much natural light as possible and add artificial light as a backup. The plan to do your shot during the time of day where each room has the most light, usually midday. Um, insert the lamp behind your camera or uh, strategically in the room to lighten up dark area. When it's been used correctly, adding flash to your shot can help a lot. Um, and of course, you do not need to have a photographic skill to make a great shot at work. Remember, you can always get Airbnb free photography. It's just a matter of getting this shot up at the beginning of your listings. So these are the tips that can help you to um, create a, a good photo. More photo better. Actually, let, let me show you. Let me talk more about how to uh, make an amazing photo. If you have um, an iPhone of the latest um, Samsung phone, they tend to create, they tend to make the picture of the, the, the room look much better than itself because they have, um, they, they make the room look brighter, lighter, especially when you, um, you notice when you do, um, 
what is called when you do uh, when you take photo of yourself, right? And um, you can see that your face you look like much nicer in the photo. So um, optimizing the lighting is either important. Um, but when checking the photo, you try to use natural light. Take the picture during the day, um, early in the morning or late afternoon, so that the sunlight is less direct. And keep the lighting consistent from room to room as well. Don't have the but the, the living room is um, too bright and then the bathroom is too dark because you don't have window in there. Um, just uh, adjust the focus of your camera to make sure that the detail of the room is sharp. Um, if you use the actual camera, not the uh, smartphone, then use a tripod so that you can take advantage of a longer exposure time without sacrificing the clarity of the image. Um, take low shot approximately 40 inches off the ground to replicate the feel of the magazine style shot. Um, and shoot um, straight on without any tilt. Modifying the angles can distort the line of your photo. Uh, turn off your flash as well. Sometimes it doesn't really help, but depend. you can take a lot of photo and then pass it out. Then you can see which one is the good one to pick it out. Okay, um, and more photo is the better. Um, the first 25 photo you have is all, all about your space. So the bedroom, the uh, the bedside, the wardrobe, um, the table and chair yeah, in the room, the flower, the TV, living room, all the amenities in the bathroom. Um, in the kitchen, everything about your space. And then the next 20 photo is about your neighborhood, either the, the front door or the, the road of your to the, uh, the street, close by views, places like a park uh, or the pub, a shop, or the station close by to your house, all the attractive places, um, photo. And when you have assembled your collection of photo, make sure to assign the best and most descriptive photo as your primary photo. So good primary photo are usually short of the living room or the large area that reflect the best feature of your space. Which me, my, um, my main photo is the bedroom because I um, ran out room by room. Um, so the most important for the guests is that when I actually have one guest, uh, when he booked my flight, he said that he uh, actually booked it because in the area, only my listing actually had the bad pictures on the listings itself um, when you search for it. So he just go to my place, go for my, my listings, and he start checking it out. And actually, it's, it's just described as good as the photo itself. Um, so that's why he go for it. Um, then when you have had enough photos to cover all the um, room amenities, space, some good pictures of um, the interesting yep, of the neighborhood, that um, that will be all the basics for your um, photo. And then you got to um, every pictures you upload, uh, make sure to um, write the colorful and descriptive caption. Um, mention the best feature of each room so as the guys for the eyes of the guests. And after you finish your listing, you can go to airbnb.com slash info slash photography and then uh, get access to a professional photographer. It's free. Um, you look in the picture, you can see that the uh, picture that people taking in the bedroom, from the bedroom, uh, by himself. And then the after photo, when the uh, photographer, Airbnb photographer, come over and take a photo, it's a completely different room, right? Uh, they have you to make the room more visibility and higher quality and just look so nice. It's make the, the room look much, much better. Better than it's, it's actually is. Yes. 
Um, there is no substitute for getting Airbnb to do your photo. You know, uh, they know their stuff and they will make your spy look great. Uh, I mean, and of course, but of course, it still took a while to get them to come out to your place, and you had to be an active host before they will even consider your application. All right. Um, I mean, after you list your space, uh, for about um two to three weeks, uh, maybe a month, and you have maybe more than twenty guests stay at your house. Then you will see, um, if you use it on your phone, you will see the, the, the option of um, book a photographer appear. It's the appear on your listings and then to click to it and um, you book it. Uh, so you don't have to go through this. But if you like want to start the beginning to go, go through to apply for a photographer and go ahead and, and go to the link. Um, Next, so actually when you've done the photo, we go into decide what the price comparable property in your area occurs. So you can decide what price you want. Um, the, if there's no space similar, then check the hotel price in the area. If you put the price too high, um, you wouldn't be able to appear on the listing so people would just ignore you because First, you don't have any review, and second, your price too too high. Um, more than that, ways um, more than that, more than what they expect to pay. So start from ten to twenty percent lower than the price. When I mean lower than the price in your area, because then compare based on the location, the number of bedroom, uh, type of amenity you price, uh, you um, you provide for the guests, and any extra things that you provide like stock um, beer or um, beverages in the fridge um, giving them some extra um, things like mint or chocolate you know and if you when you uh, add it all of that up then you can decide on what the price you will um, put on Airbnb as a standard. Find one anchor property in your area to um, work around this. Okay. Um, apart from the pricing for the room, Airbnb also um, giving you the option to charge for extra, um, such as cleaning fee, uh, additional gas, and the security deposit. Um, different hosts charge varying amount and you should tailor your charge according to the type of space you have as well as your experience level on Airbnb. For cleaning fee, um, you, um, you make more money if you add the cleaning fee into Airbnb um, and that's the and some guests they won't mind to pay for it if it's a reasonable price. Yeah, don't clean every time. Uh, don't assume some that you're going to clean your space personally every time because that is how most of the horse burn out, right? You got to calculate the time you think it's take to clean and then add 40% on top of that because that will be the proper amount of the time. And Yes, it's always more than you think. If you're planning, okay, I'm just cleaning the bedroom for like half an hour and then moving to the bathroom and the kitchen, something like not a half an hour, that's totally wrong. you got to add more time on it. You probably end up to like, if it's a one bed apartment, one bed flat, and you clean the bedroom, bathroom, kitchen, uh, it probably takes two hours. So two hours really um, for it to be cleaned and clean by yourself when you start. So you, you have a feeling and you know that how, how much time and effort required to clean particular place space. Then later on when you get a cleaner, you can tell them exactly what you expect from them to clean and uh, keep it up. Um, 
the normal price for cleaner is vary between ten pound to uh, eight pound to ten pound per hour. And if you also want to check gas in, then it will be between twelve pound to fifty pound per hour, depend on how experienced the cleaner is, and with what which cleaner you actually get into your um place. Okay. Remember to always overpay your cleaners. Um, because you will find someone or group that understand the room for the rental, it's best to pay them more, and you so they can do a better job, and you don't have to spend much time to manage them. And if you pay them good, they probably stay with you for long as well. You don't want to just keep getting a new cleaner every time, and then you have to spend time to training them over and over and over again. Um, okay, um, so don't try to profit off the cleaning fee. It's counterproductive, and will always you will always lose money if you do that in the long term. Um, all the halls are free to add an extra fee for cleaning and um, although I found that applying this charge do not negative impact on booking um, currently it's, it makes sense to have a fixed cost for cleaning a typical cleaning fee we rent um, I mean for one bedroom flat I think uh, we rent between 20 pile yeah that's it of the price you would add the, the charge you will add for your gas, not the the cost you pay for your cleaner, right? Um so it starts from like twenty pounds to I don't know, up to a hundred and two hundred pounds depend on the size of your listings in your place. Um for new listings I highly recommend to implementing implementing a low fee or no fee at all. Why? Because cleaning fee are display on per night basics. All right. That means the more nights you get booked, the lower the cleaning fee will appear. And since the new listings will benefit most by hosting an abundance of short stay to build up reviews, a low fee is optimal. A um, high fee. That's my discourage potential guests from booking um, shock styles. Okay. Um, and because you are building up your review as well. So just just have no clean fee uh, at the beginning. Because that's what I was doing. So for the first two months, um, I have no cleaning fee, no extra fee, no basically no extra charge at all. Then um from the third month onward, when I start seeing good review coming in and um, actually see the, uh, the my listing start go moving up, um, I add uh, a bit, bit of cleaning fee in. So first I add something like a half or um, more than half of what I normally pay cleaner, you know, and then after a month or two, I will increase it to the price of what I normally pay at the cleaners and maybe a little bit more. And then I keep it there. Uh, because by that time, I already have enough number of review um, for people to trust my listings to book it. And also, um, people will just um, be, just think that it's, it's normal. Yeah. It's normal, so people think that oh, all the review people also pay the same price like what I'm paying now, and they get that kind of service, so I'm gonna just pay for it, you know. Uh -huh. Within the extra charge, we also have extra people fee. Uh, if you do this right, this will add 20% to your income. Um, yes, it will. Um, the extra fee calculated into the base rate that your prop that your play display, so it rarely uh scrutinize only experienced user uh, know there's such a thing and it's, it's tricky to even find out uh, so actual people use uh, more utility create more noise create more damage 
and um, harder to manage. So it will depreciate your, your place uh, and furnishings faster eventually. Uh, but then, so if you charge for it, it will compensate yourself for all of the work extra that you have to do. Uh, for example, if your place, let's say, uh, you can accommodate six people in your two bed flat, okay? Uh, but then because you have only two two bed two room, then you have to put an extra bed or the other person can stay in the sofa or something. Then you can start with three people um, minimum, and then from the four people onward, they have to pay an extra of let's say fifteen pound twenty pound per person. Okay. So make sure make use of the extra person fee. Um, but make it reasonable so it doesn't become too large for a bar barrier for, for guests to book. So good starting fee for extra people is £7 per night per extra person. So that is for the stock and then you can add on top of it, I mean increasing it later on. Next, um, if is the whole uh, property that you um, rented out on Airbnb, then you've got to concern more about um, different um, type of guests that come to your place with different number of people. Because sometimes they say, that, oh, I only had three people coming to your six people place, right? And then they book the whole place. And then later on, you find out that they actually have six to seven or even eight people staying in your place. Um. Yeah, so that's a concern a bit later. Typically, I don't like to price my extra person fee um, relative to the room price because I ran out room my room. So I just think about each additional guest will make the place less or more appealing with the new price, all right? Make sure to tell your guests whole inquiry about coming and list um, they are one List out if there are one person or two people or more than that. So when you see they reference us or a couple or anything else similar like that, then do ask them and re-ask them and recheck on them. One of the headaches as a whole side of guests who um, yeah, bringing the extra person um, and lying about the, the, the number of people to avoid the fee the one time um, I have a, a one bedroom flat and I actually um, charge 17 pounds per person extra after two people. No, two bedroom flat, sorry. Yeah. And I think that's a fair rate. Um, you just check out in your area, um, then you will see how much people charge and then you can charge similar price. It will reflect on it or maybe 10% cheaper. Are lower than the neighbor and later on when you have a lot of reviews then you start increasing it to reflect of your place. The next chart you can put on is security deposit. Some of you will ask does it really matter? It actually matter you know if you actually um, run out the whole space um, but then sometimes with other people like me, it doesn't matter because I only rent the room and I have already know that um, we have the insurance covered by Airbnb, uh, so the deposit isn't really completely necessary. In the event of damage, you could technically use Airbnb for claims because um, they give out six hundred they have the six hundred thousand pound insurance cover for for house. So it's not worth the hassle at all to uh, put the depo security deposit to me. Uh, uh, it's, it's my point of view. And deposit that I have too high can actually be a um, stop for your guests to book your place, you know. The reasonable deposit average out the price of all the amenities available in your space. 
um, so you can base on the value of your furnishings um, and consider all the things that more likely to get broken, the glass item of um, ceramic items. Um, okay, uh, if you rent the room only like me, then and you do consider that your room worth a lot of money because you just spend a thousand pounds on a new bed, then put a very little amount of security deposit place. Um, with one bed flat, two to three bed places, you can raise your price over time at first. The deposit size won't feel like it's providing enough coverage, but you get there, okay? Um, I mean, look at all the standard landlords in a major city. You will have the option to collect the security deposit for any damage, loss, and incur during your guest stay. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. you have 84 hours after check out to make a claim with Airbnb, alright? So when you make the claims, you get can either number one, accept the claim and agree to make the payment. Agree with the payment, you can check it out of the deposit. Or uh, number two, you they can refill this claim and invoke Airbnb meditation process. And when it gets to this stage, it's a bit more complicated. You know, it will take a lot of your time to liaise with Airbnb and then liaise with the person because you couldn't agree with them. So from to other people to use it. I mean, thus it's good deter well intention and risk and intention tensioned and reasonable against. And I have several friends who are who have set their security deposit because they deal with landlords in the past who falsely claim damages, okay? Uh, the Airbnb is quite good at sniffing out the dissented landlord. But still yes, I certainly don't want to deal with this potential problem. And secondly, I never had any damages to my place other than uh extremely minor is so that I can't be climb anyway. Um, like the uh, the cabinet door in the kitchen to fall out the other day. And, you know, it's just like if you live in your space and you use it over and over and over again, one of the days it's going to come up and fall out. Um, so it's, it's not major damage that I can really make any claim. But in the case of real damage, like if the guests actually break glass table in their room or, you know, break the um, hot, the electric shower in your bathroom, then you can always um, lean on Airbnb host guarantee. Okay, um, so once we decide with all of the extra fees, um, you moving on to set your calendar you will have three options the first one is always available um, this is a completely open calendar um, yeah so Airbnb will set every day with the price that you decided uh, earlier uh, the second option is some time available you can list some date as available and some days you block it um, if you want your family to come to stay or a friend gathering or you just don't want anyone in your space and you just want it for yourself, then you can choose this. And the third option is available ones, only open for a single set of dates. This is um, like when you uh, actually go on holiday and rent in your space while you're on holiday. And you just go holiday like one or twice a year, then you can choose this option. But I highly recommend you to go for some time available because when you list your space, right? Um, then go for holiday. The chance that you will go to holiday more often because the Airbnb will pay pay for all of your holiday anyway. So you the chance that you will do this over and over and over again. <laughs> modern ones okay um, and depend on the situation like I said for 
it's for you to do each of those options um, and yes a stack of some time available to that option um, but if can if you decide okay I just clear out the room and I, I can get guests to stay in there all, all the time anytime I don't have anyone in family or friends to accommodate then yeah go for always available there isn't better and then whichever day that you decide you know oh today I'm too tired I don't want any I guess for the like the next week or something and just block it off go and block it off the easy flexible to do for reservation setting the minimum day um, Airbnb gives you the option to set the minimum and maximum amount of nights for potential guests okay um, this limit to the day your guests staying you um, you find that a lot of highly visited apartments set to two, three, nine minimum. Um, this is to maximize their profits and reduce hassles, but never set to minimum seven days. All right, better. And then whichever day that you decide, you know, oh, today I'm too tired. I don't want any uh, guests for the like the next week or something. Then just block it off. Go and block it off. That is flexible to do. For reservation setting, the minimum day, um, Airbnb gives you the option to set the minimum and maximum amount of nights for potential guests. Okay, um, this limit to the day your guests staying. You um, you find that a lot of highly visited apartments set to two, three, nine minimum. Um, this is to maximize their profits and reduce hassles but never set to minimum seven days all right um unless you actually want a long-term tenant <laughs> um but if um you are a new user with the new reviews with few reviews sorry um i recommend setting the minimum to one nine uh don't say at all you know, because to be frank, <laughs> beggars can be chosen. I'm just joking, but your door should be wide open at the one side of your Airbnb mm -hmm. career so that you can effectively build your friends, you know. And the uh, initial goal is to simply secure uh, as many good reviews and high rating as possible so that you can climb up the ranking ladder later on. So setting a minimum day can easily cut your booking in half, literally. If you want more booking, don't set it. And because for one night, um, minimum day is will build your review quickly as well. So yes, you might have to do more work because you get some in and out every day. But then after you know a month, you have if you actually if if it actually happened, I have never seen that happen. If actually happen and you actually have 20 day book by 20 guests then by the end of that month you already have 15 to 18 reviews okay yeah because we calculate into some people that don't bother to leave you review that's why mm -hmm. um, when it comes to setting a maximum amount of nights I uh, recommend you to keep it into one week especially for newbies um, yeah like I said you don't want um, long-term tenant. The goal is to keep the rental flowing while still providing an ample time for full vacation, even for seasonal user. Increasing the maximum doesn't make much sense. You're asking me why? Um, I mean, ideally, your price should be fixed at a point where the guests find it too expensive to book your apartment for two weeks for a month, you know. If your apartment is in high demand by people seeking land to stay, your price is too low. So one day rental, a great way to get positive review quickly. Um, there's so there's no reason you shouldn't be able to check these when you have your place up and running. And uh, if you're a serious horse about improving your listing, you should be see this as an opportunity. You can always set to no minimum and then selective choose guests that are staying longer you know so that easy for you 
um, if you have to have to have to insist on setting uh, minimum days, it actually take longer to get your review, and you will get less booking. So maybe just restrain yourself from doing it until you have some reviews. <laughs> okay, the next one, Airbnb give you an option of instant book. Um, and many hosts are using this op option now. Uh, the instant book is um, is is um is is a tool that allow guests to book your property without first asking for its availability. Um, get many guests will just book and then send you a message about themselves. And then you will get a substantially less information about each guest if you go this route down. Um, but instant book will dramatically increase your booking, but can come with a lot of headache. Um, and only turn. So when you start, I highly recommend you to um, not using it. And start this when you expect you become an experienced host, which means you already host from 10 to 15 guests. Um, this look, um, you will have an option to turn this on later on. There will be a yellow lighting bulb appear on your listings. Last minute is booking, book with our host approval. That is it, yeah. So this is, this explain about instant book better. Um, the guests, have to send a message, then reapprove the date, then the guests can book it. Um, so remember to only turn this on when you are fully prepared and have some experience host things. Host is so multiply when you have instant book. Make sure you're running a time shift before turning this on. Yeah, and by the time uh, Airbnb mature in a city, virtually all hosts will use instant book. So it might be a requirement to say, stay competitive. Um, this isn't necessarily a bad thing though. After you get in the hang of renting, you have to go, go into one to personally get every guest coming, vet every guest coming and reapprove every guest coming, right? Um, but be especially careful if you list a spare room and a full apartment as well because you can be easily double bulk it's happened to me you know right um yes so in the book we give you more booking uh most property has instant book turn on and 50 to 80 percent will serve the house you instant book so it will depend on your place and your space you can decide later on after you have become an experienced house with more than 10 guests. Um, so when you decide about instant book, we're moving into the cancellation policies. You got five options in here. Uh, the flexible, guests are entitled to full refund one day uh, before their arrival. And then you have a moderate, which means the guests are entitled to a full refund uh, five day upon their arrival. And then you got strict one, which guests are entitled to 50% refund up until one week before their arrival. And then super strict, which the guests are entitled to 50% refund up until 30 days before their arrival. Um, when you start out, go for flexibility, please. Um, don't do super strict or strict. Actually, crosses out of your Airbnb. Super strict or strict, it doesn't make any sense for this. Even with a hotel, they don't even do super strict or strict, right? Um, the guests might lose a bit of deposit at the beginning, but you know, they all entitled to uh, being refunded uh, if they cancel before their uh, arrival. Um, so to the flexibility when you're starting out and new, um, 
because from a consumer standpoint, the flexible option is by far the easiest and simplest way to make a reservation. It will encourage your user to choose your apartment despite the lack of review. And also, when you are new and you're booking a fairly spare, the last minute cancellation will affect you significantly, you know. This is only a major concern for heavily sought apartment that face much higher opportunity cost for cancel visit. When you reach approximately 80% of occupant, uh, occupancy, you can consider switching to moderate if you want. This means that you can afford to, um, you know, um, cancel a flaky customer simply because the level of demand is high enough for you. And plus, that um, at this level of, of occupancy, the cancellation will significantly impact on your earning power. So if you're unsure of whether or not to switch to moderate, take a look at your cancellation one um, over the last three months. If you're getting a high percentage of cancellation somewhere in the neighborhood of, neighborhood of 20%, I would recommend switching to moderate. Would you expect you strict, super strict? Um, I advise against all of these policy plays. They highly restrict and quite unpleasant from consumer standpoint. When is the last time you ever heard of hotel and for such strict regulation, right? This is completely out of whack with hospitality industry standard, to be honest. Um, and additionally, if you are indeed looking to rent your space on a long-term basis, you will likely to be best served on an apartment rental website. Mm -hmm. And then you have an option of creating, so after the cancellation policy, you have an option of creating an office or Airbnb guidebook. And this is just optional, it's not, um, it's not like you have to done it in order for you to list the space, okay? So if, um, I just talk about it quickly. Um, basically, Airbnb provide hosts with the option to create a guidebook within the Airbnb platform. And you can find this option to on the manage listings, okay? Um, this page will offer a convenient way to make recommendation to your guests. You can ask cafe, restaurant, tourist attraction, anything that might tickle the fancy of a potential guest, or anything that you actually fancy yourself in your area. If you have created an Airbnb uh, guidebook, it will be viable, then the guests can scroll down from your listing. But again, sometimes they will still keep asking you over and over again because they didn't bother to read your listing. But anyway, you got to have it in order to list your place and actually attract the right guests who stay at your place. Okay, next in the next session, we will moving into more moving into my listings. I will show you in the inside of my listings. And we, I will walk you step by step on um, putting or create a listings on your account. Okay, I see you in the next one. Bye bye.